Welcome back to the Schlocky Horror Picture Show and the first spaceship on Venus, a Soviet-financed film with an anti-nuclear message. Back in the 50s, the USA became obsessed with enormous rockets penetrating deep space, evidenced by the large number of films made during that time. Strangely enough, America seemed to be the only country making these kinds of films. Japan was busy with giant monster smackdowns. Italy had its hands and feet full of swords and sandals. Mexico had its mind set on crime-fighting wrestlers. And with typical efficiency, Germany didn't even bother with the metaphors and cut straight to the sex. But the USA wasn't entirely alone in the creation of such films. In fact, their rival in the space race, Russia, was also making major space movies, and if these films were anything to go by, Soviet space missions were just as wacky as their American counterparts. Ponderous and introverted, yes, but still wacky. Case in point, first spaceship on Venus, originally released as The Silent Star, and although based on the novel Astronauts by Stanislaw Lem, the award-winning author denied any connection to his book, as it had been adapted by a committee of vodka fueled Marxists and an office shredder. It's a real pity, as Lem's books have been translated into 40 languages and have sold over 27 million copies, including Solaris, which has been filmed no less than three times, which is three times more than absolutely necessary. In fact, my old friend and fellow author Ted Sturgeon once told me that Lem was the most widely read science fiction writer in the world. Director Kurt Maitig was one of the most respected filmmakers of East Germany, but not because of tonight's film. He received his PhD in 1935 for his dissertation entitled The Accountancy of a Film Copying Institution. Riveting stuff indeed. He joined the state-owned film studio known as DEFA in 1947, where he directed and edited the weekly newsreel and his first feature film, Marriage in the Shadows, which turned out to be the country's most successful film of the post-war period. This, by the way, is why East Germany no longer exists. As some of you may have worked out by now, First Spaceship on Venus doesn't actually star Ernest Borgnine or Liam Neeson or any of those other actors I mentioned earlier. Sorry. Nonetheless, there are some interesting people wandering aimlessly in front of the camera, like Lucina Winichka, a Polish actress who appeared in 21 films and played the lead role in Mother Joan of Angels, which took the Cannes Film Festival by storm in 1961. There's also Gunther Simon, who plays the American pilot Raymond Brinkman. He starred in such films as Anna Susanna, Swings or Roundabouts, Ernst Thalman, Demals in Paris, The Dress, and The Sailor's Song. But the most interesting actor tonight by far is Yoko Tani, who plays the pretty Dr. Sumiko Ogimura. Yoko Tani was a French-born Japanese nightclub entertainer who was limited entirely to being cast as stereotypical orientals in French films. When the United States occupation of Japan ended, the French discovered Japanese cinema, culminating in a total of six Japanese films being entered at Cannes in 1955. Movie-making maestro Akira Kurosawa met Tani at the festival and took her back to Japan, after which her career really took off. Despite this, Tani could never cut her ties to the nightclub scene, and when producer Betty Box was looking to cast her in The Wind Cannot Read, she eventually found Tani in a strip joint in Paris. I can't imagine seeing Box in a strip joint. That reminds me of the time I had to improvise a fan dance at the Moulin Rouge after Josephine Baker slipped on one of those banana skins she insisted on wearing around her waist. Messy evening all round. But that's a story for another time. Let's get back to First Spaceship on Venus while I reminisce about Gay Paris and sunbathing topless on the Riviera. Now there's an image. <laughs> 